Have you ever wondered how people can solve a Rubik's Cube blindfolded? In this video, I'll explain the basics of the old Pachmann method, the easiest way of solving a Rubik's Cube blindfolded. Although it may sound complicated, most of the difficulty comes from having to memorize and recall the information needed to solve the cube. I like to say that the underlying method is so simple that you could do it with your eyes closed. A blindfolded solve is split into two phases, memorization and execution. After starting the timer, a solver will figure out and memorize what they need to do to solve the cube. After memorization, they will don their blindfold and execute what they memorized to solve the cube. Finally, they can stop the timer and remove their blindfold. The standard 3x3x3 Rubik's Cube has three kinds of pieces. Corner pieces, which have three stickers. Edge pieces, which have two stickers. And center pieces, which have one sticker. One thing that you might notice is that turning any of the six faces of the cube doesn't move the locations of any of the center pieces. In order to simplify this video, I will focus on solving the corner pieces. This will be easiest to visualize as a 2x2x2 two by two by two Rubik's Cube. The nice thing about the old Pachmann method is that you only need to know one sequence of turns, or algorithm, to be able to solve the corners. This algorithm will let us swap the pieces in two corner positions from a specific orientation. The first position being swapped is where the white, blue, and orange piece is when the cube is solved, from the white sticker. The position that is being swapped with is where the yellow, red, and green piece is, from the red sticker. If we perform this algorithm, known as the Y-perm, the white and red stickers will swap places. Now you can see that the white sticker is where the red sticker was, and the red sticker is where the white sticker was. Finally, you can see that no other pieces have moved around. You can now swap the pieces back using the same algorithm to solve the cube. We can refer to the position of the white, blue, and orange piece as the buffer position, and the position of the yellow, red, and green piece as the target position. Using this terminology, the Y-perm algorithm swaps the pieces in the buffer and target positions. In this video, the buffer will always be in the white, blue, and orange position. However, the target can change depending on the sticker you want to swap the buffer with. Now, what if you wanted to swap the buffer with the sticker in another position, like this green sticker as the target? Well, we already know how to swap the buffer with the position of the red sticker using the Y-perm. This leads us to the main trick of the method. You can move the green sticker over to where the red sticker was in order to swap with the green sticker instead. We can now use the Y-perm to swap the buffer with the target. But then, we have to get the target back to where it originally was. To do that, we can turn the bottom face counterclockwise to get everything back in place. And if you take a look around, you can see that we've successfully swapped the white, blue, and orange piece with the yellow, green, and orange piece. What if we have to solve more than one piece? Let's start by looking at the buffer position. We need to figure out where it needs to go before we can swap it. You can see that it is the yellow, red, and green piece, and the red sticker is on the top. That means that the buffer needs to be swapped with the same sticker from our first example using the Y-perm. Let's use the Y-perm algorithm to solve that piece. After using it, you can see that a new piece is in the buffer position. It is the yellow, green, and orange piece from our recent example. We can solve this by moving it over to the position that the Y-perm swaps. Now we can do the Y-perm algorithm again and move the piece back. Now that you know how to solve multiple pieces, we need to go over how to determine the order of the pieces before you solve them, during the memorization phase. This can be done using a method called tracing. We can start by looking at the buffer position. 
By looking at the piece in the buffer position, we can determine where it needs to go. In this case, it needs to be swapped with the piece here on the right side of the cube. We know that after swapping the buffer with the target, the piece in the target position will end up in the buffer position. This means that after we do the first swap, we will need to solve the piece that was in the target position before the swap. You can think of it as solving one piece at a time, always solving the piece that was in the previous target position. With this in mind, solvers memorize what target pieces they will swap with the buffer with. If you are interested in learning the entire process, I have linked some resources in the description. I hope this video gave you a good introduction to solving a Rubik's Cube blindfolded, or at least helped you understand the basics of the process. If you enjoyed watching this video, please consider subscribing to my channel or leaving a like. Thanks for watching.